Hello, um, I am going to record a little video here on using the Write to File block um, in LabVIEW and show you how the data is stored in a variety of formats and then um, uh, how you can bring that into Excel. So, um, I'm starting here with a small uh, VI. It just has a knob and a, um, uh, an output to signals. I'll run this just to show you what it looks like nothing special. I turn this knob and you can see the um, um, gauge here follows what the knob is doing. There's a little half second delay just to make a point um, and um, it works pretty well. So I'm going to stop this and what I want to do is I want to record that data as I'm turning the knob. So I'm going to come over here into the uh, block diagram, right click, and there's a couple places where you can get this thing, but the easiest is under Express VI, and you want to go to Output, and it's right here. It's called Measure, uh, Write a Measurement File. We're going to drag it in, it goes there, and it pops up this uh, wizard uh, because it's a an Express VI, and it gives you a lot of options. The first one is the file name. Notice where it's storing it. It'll be in my Documents folder under LabVIEW data and they are calling it test.lvm. You have several different file formats available. I'm just using the first one because it's a text file. It's the smallest way to go. If you select Microsoft Excel, it creates a huge file right off the bat. Um, so I'm going to start with a text file and this is what you have to do when you're storing these files on the MyRio because the MyRio doesn't have you know terabyte hard drives on it. It, it has a small flash um, memory component uh, you have to go with the text files but we're doing this on a PC I could change to the other one I'll let you experiment with that on your own time but I'm going to keep that I'm also going to uh, select overwrite the existing file because I, I don't I just want to keep the current the most current one um, you could also stop the program and ask them to choose a file and all that none of that works when using the MyRio. So we're, we're setting this up to work on its own. These other things I'll explain a little bit um, in just a few seconds, uh, like the segment headers and the XY stuff. Um, I, actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn on a column of time values, okay, so that you can see something's happening. Uh, again, you can explore some of these other things, but this is good right now. And I'm going to wire up. I'm going to wire the signal from here. If I can get it to spool, yep. To the signal in. And it's happy. Now, I'm going to run this for the first time. And I want you to watch what happens down here. Because this is the Documents LabVIEW folder that was part of the file name. So when I run this, okay, notice what happened. It instantly created that. And it's actually recording data in it right now. If I turn this knob, we're not, you know, seeing anything uh, very massive happening on the screen here. But if, when I stop this, it's still got this file here, and I'm going to open this in a text editor just to make a point. Um, if I come up here, I'm going to actually open it with Notepad++, uh, and let me drag that in. It looks like this. So. Um, what has been recorded is all sorts of information including this piece at the top is called the header and it gives you information about what's following. Um, it says end of header, channel one, sample one, the date, and look at this exact time down to the subfractions of a millisecond, okay, and there's the data, zero. And then it starts over okay and gives another header and more information and the second sample is um, somewhere here right here okay and if I had taken the time to say it I think you can back up the video that would have been the exact voltage on the knob when we started it it's the same thing here for the third sample and it's the same see they're exactly the same but after a while, and, and each of these is written every half a second, because I have a half second delay in the thing, we get to a place where 
it changes. So what could happen? It was many, many seconds at that number because I was talking, and then it changed. And it's going down and down and down and down and down. And then it reverses because I reversed the knob. So you see, buried in all this text is the information we want. But there's too much of this other stuff, this, this header material, that gives all these gory details about the exact microsecond that the data was taken. So it's not that the data isn't there, it's just buried. So I'm going to run it again. And this time I'm going to um, change the properties of the right file block. And I'm going to get rid of headers. I can get rid of them completely. In this case, I'm going to keep one header just at the beginning. I'm going to leave everything else the same. And let's just see what happens. So I'm going to say OK. I'm going to run this program. I'm going to turn the knob. I'm going right to zero there. Left it there about a second. Coming back up slowly. I'm going to go all the way to 10 and then come back. And then I'll just stop the program. And if I go over to this thing, this thing, notice it detected that the file had changed. So I'm going to reload it. And look how it looks different. There's only one header. Here's the first sample. And here's all the samples that followed. And you can see we started off high. And we started going down. And we bottomed out at zero. That was about a second and a half. And then we got up to 10 and we left it there a little while. And then, and then we end it. And you can see that that data matches what's in the video. Notice the spacing and time. There's the first reading at 000, start of the time. And this is just a, a millisecond past half a second. Back on a second. Here's, a, again, another millisecond past. If you look, it's, it's every half second. It's recording data, plus or minus a few hundred microseconds, um, because the timers aren't perfect, and you know, for whatever reasons. We don't have to get into that. Uh, but you know, if you just limit yourself to the first two decimal places, that's right on the money in terms of doing what this, this VI said to do, which is to record data every half a second. You can imagine pretty quickly how easy it would be to drag this data into Excel and just graph it and uh, do that. And you can do that. You can literally copy and paste this thing in. Um, you can read it from an Excel, from within Excel. But when you do that, you go through a data conversion tool. So I want to show you how you might speed up that process. If I close this and I go back to this file, then this is what you're going to have to do. We're going to right click on it and we're going to tell it to open with Excel every time. And this is going to be a little different on your computer. Uh, it, you know, mine has not been set up to use Excel yet, so I'm going to try an app on this PC. It found this Excel. Sure, we'll use it. Uh, you might have to dig a little deeper on your machines. Um, worst case, you can pull, uh, go down here and choose another app. And then just go into the program files area and click on it. Um, but I'm going to say OK to this. And I'm going to click this box to always open it in Excel. And there it is. Uh, you know, it's the same data we just saw. It put into columns for us. The header material is there if I want it. Um, I can grab um, this stuff. And... Um, insert a graph with that in it. Let's see what it looks like. Insert. Uh, let's do a scatter plot. And you can see right away that it looks like what I did with the, um, the knob. I, you know, ran it to the limits a couple times and, and then ended here. So my point in this video is just to show you that the ability to write to Excel is fairly straightforward uh, and even though uh, we're not using the Excel spreadsheet format 
we can go from this LVM format, which stands for LabVIEW Measurement File, directly into Excel, um, and 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 very quickly get a graph on the screen. Um, so that's a very useful thing. Um, I'm going to stop, and I'll probably show you another video in a minute, um, or next day, um, explaining what the differences are when you save directly to the MyRio.